one more time hi this is rushka and uh i just started recording and uh her socials are all rushka gg uh she's yes. on youtube twitter instagram um and twitch so do go give her a follow please um and i don't know who something? needs to hear this but it's not case sensitive when you google things so it's sad that some people need to know this <laughs> Love her hoodie. Dude, when I saw her, I was like, I actually want to go get a hoodie now, but it was too late. Thank you. It was from, it's from H&M. Like very pretty. Ago. It looks very cozy. Like soft. Is it soft? It's soft. Oh my God. <laughs> Gentle on the skin. I need more hoodies. Oh, fuck it. Okay. All right. We are here to interview Rushka. For me, a very prominent south african female streamer and content creator and if you guys have some questions i will be allowing some questions uh feel free to put them in the chat we will look them up but for my first question is very there's gonna be very basic questions and then there's gonna be more personalized questions for you so okay. my first question is super basic when did you start streaming streaming i started streaming i think in 2018 um it was very casual at the time it's, i mean it still is but yeah 2018 and then i took a bit of a break i think i took like a six seven month break and then i got back into it yeah i think late 2019. Yeah, okay. it's been a while nice and then um let me just grab this question i have like a bunch of keywords i don't write questions down because then my brain wants to automatically read all of them so i'm just gonna grab the actual keywords here <clears throat> Why did you start streaming? You can tell us about that so long. Why did you decide um, streaming? Yeah, so obviously for like various reasons. So when I first started, I was already doing content creation. I think I've been doing content creation for like over 10 years. Oh, wow. It's, yeah, it's been it's been long, but it wasn't necessarily gaming stuff. Uh, when I first started content creation, uh, blogger was out. So for those of you that are too young, what blogger is? It's one of the very first OG blogs um, out there. And back then, it was like a very niche thing. You did it just because you were simply interested in whatever you wanted to write about, whether it's poetry or fashion. Or um, it wasn't the sort of influencer sort of thing that you see today. People blogged because they wanted to just express themselves or they were creative. There was no sort of end goal of being a celebrity or being sponsored or whatever. It was just this community of creative individuals who just wanted to share whatever they were passionate about. Um, and I really liked that. Um, so one of the first bloggers I discovered was uh, Tavi Gevinson. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she was a fashion blogger and her blog was called The Style Rookie. And I was obsessed with her. She was this 14 year old quirky, fashion lover and she was so unique her style was so unique she would take something like a hanger and she would like wear it as a necklace and like big floppy hats and whatever and the style was like so well documented in that that she ended up getting invited to like new york fashion week and paris fashion week and that so she was just 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 by having fun she was doing all of that and i was like this is really cool and i was always like into fashion and that so i actually started with um, otaku fashion one of my first blogs was called the rookie analyst because I was studying mathematics at the time so because i wanted to be a data analyst or a data scientist and i like fashion but i'm a rookie at it so i put myself the rookie analyst um yeah that was that was fun uh otaku fashion i'm still into like uh, the harajuku style and otaku fashion but not for me personally just looking at it so i had a bit of a weeb blog going for a while and then i kind of got over like fashion and style blogging i didn't like the whole having to constantly take pictures of your outfits all the time it became a bit exhausting after a while and yeah it started moving in the direction where where it is today where influencing and that is very superficial and i didn't like where it was going so i was like mm, this isn't really my thing anymore and i took a bit of a break from that um, just closed my site down and stuff and then i focused on studying more and then i've always been into gaming and whatever i think when i probably got 800 hours into fallout 4 my partner was like why don't you just stream this you're playing it so much why don't you just stream it and i was like huh 
actually because we always spitballed like how we would get back into content creation because mm. he's a sous chef and uh, <clears throat> he's always wanted to start like a food blog or whatever so we always used to spitball ideas of what our next sort of project joint project would be and it was like you should just you game so much why don't you just stream so obviously did my research and stuff and that's when 2018 i got into twitch and whatever and that i was still just doing casually but i think when covid hit that was literally like the worst time because at the start of covid covid i lost my job i just everything was just going wrong and that's when i had all the time to focus on like gaming content creation and that and that's when i actually started making short form content and you you can still find like 15 minute youtube videos on of like my first streams which is like outlast and that because i knew i always wanted to play like party games and that and um yeah that's how i got into streaming was thanks to me losing my job and covid and stuff that's when i really got into it mm-hmm. um obviously things have settled down a lot for me now i'm back at a full time job so i can't do it as much as i used to um but i at least try and get a video or something out at least once a week because mm-hmm. i'm really passionate about what i do and love doing it so yeah. yeah we make a plan that's cool that yeah. was really cool thank you Um I would also like to ask you when you first started not 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 the the blogging per se but when you first started like streaming what was your startup setup what did it look like what were you using I don't even know if I can remember that for even though it was only like 5 6 years ago I don't know um but it was cheap stuff I think We got the I don't know if you know Ava Media, but they had like the stream bundle kit, which was like a capture card, a webcam, a, a mic. So I got all of those. It was like this little bundle <coughs> on take a lot. I think now it's like more expensive, but back then I think it was like six hundred rand to buy. I think it's like three thousand rand. I don't know why the price went up that much. Mm. So I just bought it like El Chipo setup, but I always had like a decent PC. I mean, streaming when Fallout Four was released, like you needed to have a decent, I think, nine seventy or something. um could it be run us but yeah, yeah 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 but at that time that was like you know considered a AV game so yeah. i think my i think i had like a amd pc first so i'm not even going to remember what the name of the graphics card is because they got weird names it's like a r x whatever whatever but then i quickly moved over to intel and then the gpu i got straight off to that was a 1080 which was like a bit of a pump from what i had but yeah Funny thing is when I was playing Battlefield 4 for like a few months um I didn't realize that I was using my onboard graphics instead of the graphics card so and I was playing it fine the whole time because again like I've always had bad eyesight side right so I didn't like notice how cuck the game was and whatever so I was playing on onboard graphics Battlefield 4 for a very long time and then like one day I just looked at the back and I was like something is not right here and then I plugged it into the graphics card and then I put on Battlefield 4 again and I was like oh <laughs> I fucked up. Fucked up badly. The fact that your PC was actually running that game without being plugged into the graphics card though. Listen, this yeah. was still this was AMD. Mm-hmm. That's why like no one can talk about shit about AMD to me because that that um onboard graphics was your it was running. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Wally. Hey mom, I'm Rushko, you're both amazing. Thank you, Wolfstorm. Thank you. Do you prefer st- Okay, I'm going to read a few every now and then I'm going to pop in a question from the chat. Uh chat is asking, do you prefer to stream games or just chatting and reactions? Depends on my mood. Um so I like chatting to like viewers and whatever because I can talk if someone brings up any topic, I'll just go off on it, right? Um yeah, it depends on my mood. if i'm just not listening to speak to people and i actually just really want to play a game then i just stream the game mm-hmm. and then i'm a cack streamer because i'm ignoring my chat all the time nah, but, like, when i do want to when i do want to chat then i the chat, chat knows how to entertain themselves sometimes exactly. you just need to stream a game and enjoy it and check on your chat every now and then no, I, i i i do i, I get it i get it yeah so it okay. really just it depends yeah follow up to my question just before that what does your pc setup look like now like your peripherals that you're using for streaming right now compared to back then. Um what's different is I've got a soundbar, I've got a switch now. Um I was just gifted this Rode mic from Bum. I'm, I still need to set Ooh. it up. I know. Thank you Bum. Thank you Sheesh. so much. Yeah, I picked it up uh, this morning. 
I, I still have my 1080. I've got a hell of a lot of hard drives. I've got two SSDs now. Um, upgraded my monitor to a 14, what is it? A 144 hertz monitor. So even though I was like, whoa, okay, that's nice. So my next upgrade would definitely be, I think, a graphics card. Mm -hmm. And then the CPU also needs an upgrade. But okay. this is pretty much the same setup I had over the, like, the past five years. I think I maybe got more RAM. I was on 16 gigs. I'm on 32 gigs now. Um, okay. But yeah, it looks lecker. And I've, I didn't have this mic on, but I think one of my, not my first, maybe second or third Twitch payout, I got this mic on, which I'm very really proud about. Mm. That's yeah. cool. Uh, Wally is saying, uh, I still have the same setup I played Fallout 4 with. It's saying, please let me rest when I open a game. <laughs> Wally, you need to upgrade your B. Wally's my brother, by the way. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Welcome in. Yeah. Wally, it's my brother. And so, budget engines start when the gaming laptops are on. Oh, yeah, listen, yeah. My PCs, the, the, the fans are yelling at me now. Oh yeah, I got a gaming laptop as well, but that was that's my work laptop. But I managed to convince work to give me a gaming laptop instead. It's a Lenovo Legion Five. Ooh! So I've also got that. I considered Thanks. making it like a streaming PC, but then I did up on all the effort um, involved with that, and I was like, "Nah, that's yeah. okay. I'll skip that." Okay. All right. Uh, what's your favorite game to play on the stream? So, like, what's the most? What's the game that? just gives you those feel-good vibes that you'll always play on stream without a doubt. Minecraft. Minecraft. I nice. love Minecraft so much. And all oh. stream? Mm, I think any, like, RPG single-player games, like Fallout. Um, yeah, Hellblade was so good. Well, I streamed Hellblade, but those type of games I like mm. to... Play offline. Play where offline. You, you, yeah, you just get to, like, focus on the game. You don't Yo. have to pay attention to chat. You just muff you. there in your only looking cuck and stunk and you don't have to worry about missing anyone's messages and you can yep. listen to your cuck songs also without anyone judging you, you know. Yeah, it's a so. change my music before the stream as well. I was playing like, not like heavy metal, but metal. Yeah, you can't listen to what you, you like, you have to have this balance between keeping chat happy and yourself happy. So. Yeah. And because my music taste is like all over the place. So like one yes. second I'm listening to like, I don't know, kill switch engage, and then the mm. next minute I'm listening to like country or what or folk mm. music, and the team's gonna be like, um, "Are you okay? What's going on?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tinder, well, not to mention the fact that we me. can't listen to music on stream anymore. Well, Tinder provided me with a pretty cool um, playlist that I found that's also on Spotify. It's mm. like a Star Wars lo-fi, which I usually play during my um, my interviews. Star Wars lo-fi. Yes. You want me okay, to share it with that, you? You're saying that to me. What the hell? Star Wars lo-fi. <laughs> Star Wars lo-fi. 58 songs. I said, how many genres do you want? And they're like, yes. <laughs> okay, share, copy, link to playlist. I'm actually going to put it in the chat for you guys. Are you, do you have my chat open? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got it. All right. There we go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Star Wars lo-fi hip-hop. Let me just save this now. And it is DMCA, wada wada wada. Okay, favorites. Cantina band, Achilla. Solden is asking here, don't know if it has been asked, but if Rishka had to meet a brand new young creator and could only give them one tip for their content, what would it be? Yo, I can give them a lot. We've got a bad um, ass over here. Where do I start? Network? But also gatekeep which isn't which isn't good advice like but with my experience don't okay before people like misunderstand <laughs> don't gatekeep everything but i've had ideas that i've shared with people oh I've okay no i see what you mean i see what you mean yeah that gets yeah. stolen from underneath me so quickly or i, I start... when you said gatekeep but i understand now yeah yeah no gatekeep your gatekeep your ideas until mm. you've implemented them do not share them with people mm. um even if it's just in passing or you're casually mentioning it people will steal that shit not to mention like even in like the first week of me posting a certain thing right or me just creating some sort of like habit or trend for myself 
I quickly notice how other creators will pick up on that and they will start finding ways to implement it in their stuff, which is fine. Like imitation is like a form of that or whatever. Um, but then you get others that just flat out copy you and it's like, come on, seriously. Just just put a bit of a spin on it at least, whatever. Yeah. So gatekeep your, your creativity and your ideas. Um, and then don't be such a perfectionist also. I think it's important because a lot of people, they start out and they want the best everything and they you know they'll stop themselves from streaming because they don't have the best computer or the best audio just just start right yeah um, and i think this is also very important a lot is a lot of people getting to streaming they're like oh, i want to stream i want to do this full time but that's all they do they stream and they in stream and that's it um you you can't find any offline content of theirs they don't have a portfolio to show anywhere um, so immediately when you're done streaming, if you can, if you've got the time and resources to just make a short little clip to share somewhere for those who missed your stream that want to check it out on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times like um, a brand or someone has asked me to recommend them specific types of streamers or whatever. And then I can't find anything in that particular niche for that brand. Or I know the people, but when I go to their Instagram or their TikTok, I can't justify sharing them to the brand because it will make me look bad because they just put zero effort yeah. into their brand or representing themselves so they're really good with their streams they'll get like 70 viewers or whatever on twitch but then their instagram looks like complete it's shit. dry yeah i get you or their facebook page or whatever like they're not representing themselves outside of streaming yeah so that is so important if you want to make it a career that is use your social media as a type of portfolio Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Andy Hart is saying, along with that question, what is the challenge that you faced? What what is what is the biggest challenge that you faced as a streamer? Um, don't say load shedding. Load shedding doesn't count. That's something well, we all yeah. share. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, that's that's a your. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of challenges for streamers, right? I think confidence. A lot of us. You have to definitely train yourself to become so confident. Kita says hi. Hi, Kita babes. And Teddy. Love you. Hi, Teddy. Um, I think the confidence thing is, is something that you sort of have to like, fake it till you make it. I don't naturally, I'm not naturally a bubbly person. I'm not naturally um, energetic or whatever. But when you stream, you kind of have to have a little bit of that. You can't mm. sit like, I'm normally, I'm like a very druk person, right? My humor's dry. I'm dry, I'm chill, I just like, I'm so monotonous, even in the way I speak, my voice is usually like, Rrr. but when I started streaming, I had to like learn like how to be a little bit more interesting or exciting. And that obviously messes with your confidence, being like putting yourself on the public platform messes with your confidence a lot. People will point things out about you that's that you don't want to know about. Um, you get roasted all the time, uh, which is funny, but sometimes if you're repetitively, like it does, like your confidence, you have to have a solid confidence and uh, self-worth if you want to do this. I think that's one of the biggest obstacles. Uh, that's that's personal obstacle. I think another obstacle is, um, especially that those who don't have the finances or means, it's incredibly difficult to do content creation if you or struggling to get the right equipment or like editing you need you need beefy equipment right you can do it on your phone but that's going to take so much longer if you then having a beefy pc with premiere pro or vega or whatever you use right um so <clears throat> I, I find that a lot of content creators that don't have the means they've got so many other setbacks um aside from what everyone else deals with um mm. and it's bullshit and unfair but that's life yeah yeah i don't Music have that problem is... anymore yeah. I so when I stopped, we all started out like that, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, thankfully, I can use my Photoshop without my PC crashing and whatever. There was another point I wanted to bring up, but I forgot. So hopefully, I remember just now. We can we can circle back to it. Oh. Having confidence is a big in it, to stream is a big thing. It it is it is. I also, I want to say there's probably people who like mask who've been masking their whole lives and maybe find it a bit easier to put on that bubbly face when they are streaming. Oh, yeah. But it is still just as exhausting when you like, get off stream. I don't know if you have this thing where you end your stream and then you just sit in silence yeah. for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. You just sit quiet you just sit there for like... five minutes because you just need like, you just need like quiet. 
because you just realized how much you were talking and it was like you were constantly filling in the silence and that yep. so yeah it's it's a lot um i don't think a lot of people realize how much it, how much toll it takes on you especially if you're an introvert and you're not really a talkative person and that um mm. i make it sound like the worst thing in the world but streaming is amazing i love it yeah it is no it's just it's it's got its challenges and its difficulties and mm. a certain amount of effort that you need to put in to make it work you know unless a you're super super effort. viral and established you have oh, yeah, to be yeah. yeah another thing that frustrates me is people who experience like viral success <sighs> and this Wait, is me so being like shady, for example yeah yeah no I'm, i'm getting there this is i'm about to be shady in like 3 to 1 and i don't give a fuck but There's a lot of people that got viral success off of one or two videos and then they like skyrocket when it comes to followers but their content is lacking and it's very frustrating to see brands like work with them just because they've got those numbers or whatever yeah. and then you see like smaller creators that are putting like their heart and soul into their content that are just getting flat out ignored and just you know just yeah can I can I put anything. myself can I put myself on the chopping block here quickly No please Okay <laughs> My TikTok for example, right? I run a it used to be a lot more active, right? And um I put some spicy angy things on there and some happy things and some cute things, but one video went viral on my page. It got almost a million views. Yeah, yo. I must go look at it. And now it's just me saying that I'm gay for call me Chris. Like that's it. That's that's all the video was. I love call me Chris, but listen. This is what I eat also. It's like you'll never know what freaking video is going to get you viral. I'm mm-hmm. sure these videos that just been wait, I opened up TikTok to go in. I'll I'll put it on a notepad to go and find that video. Um I'm sure that wasn't the video that you put the no. most effort into that went viral. No, I so I funny. not at all. I was I literally just stood there and I was like cuz I stitched a video of hers and I was mm-hmm. like, "Please, can you please just reject me now?" That was the video. That was it. Did she respond? She did. <laughs> Call me Chris, you better respond right now. <laughs> she did. She did. No, she's so cool. I like her content. She's really she's cool. cool. She's very sweet. And But she like an led she, she led everybody on as well. She was like she just put like the little devil's face and he he. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that. I love her so much. Um yeah. so she's an example of someone that also like went viral. But she became consistent. Like her mm. content is good. Like a TikTok yes. looks clean, you know. Mm-hmm. Her YouTube videos are clean. Yes. And then you got some local creators that like that like 100k subs or whatever and then they work with a brand and then it's just them with a fucking this is literally it product in hand and then a picture on their phone giving the brand a shout out on Twitter or whatever and it's like give people who like actually want this badly a chance like give the smallest creators a chance they will put like 110% into that yeah in that one camera phone picture Yeah. Ah, oh, anyway, we got a long way to go in South Africa when it comes to that. Yeah, we do. But this is also like a sh- it's not just like a I feel like what you said is like extremely important in a way that like you're not saying this just to hop guck if if that makes sense at mm. other people that are that are doing that with brands. I think it's also a very teachable moment because like not even I thought about that until you mentioned it now which is so dumb because like mm-hmm. I've worked with brands before. Um and I feel like if anybody if anybody in the chat feels like we touched a nerve speaking about this about the way that this person would promote their social media or the brand that they're working for. Um I would say look at it as a helpful tip rather than a punch down. because that's pretty much I think that's what it was to me that's how I perceived it anyway um I feel like uh, also if you're offended with what I say then fight me don't fight mama because mama didn't say <laughs> that was my words no they can fight me I don't care it doesn't matter it's okay but I think it's very important I think that's super super important and I think that anybody who's watching who's looking to work with brands can actually use what you said to better themselves as content creators and people who work with brands i think it's super important um no matter how you said it i think it's super super important mm. and honestly boy. i've seen th- people no, do amazing boy. things Father with smartphones hell. like you can capture you can do movie shit with your smartphone now mm. so like i don't want some in 30p looking low quality thing from someone with a lot of anyway so uh, circle like getting back to my points um, i just wanted to show you my special smartphone ayo is that the one that doesn't charge No, it charges now, but it's the same one. Yeah. Oh, okay. One. You no, no, no. You need to get a, a, a sponsor there with a file. 
Um, <laughs> so circling back to like my point, because it wasn't just to be a shady bitch. Yes. So I remember when we did the Femmes and Names invitation, all Jess and myself. Now Jess and, and myself, we're small creators, right? Even though we like put 110% into our work, we still like considered small with like as far as numbers are concerned. Um, and I remember when we did the Espresso show, we were on the side because like we just did a live show and we did well and whatever, we're so proud of it. And not even fucking five minutes, we see a tweet from a big creator um, saying how she doesn't understand how smaller creators get to book all these things because they know this and that person and whereas this particular creator hasn't been approached by anyone and she can't understand you know why she doesn't get to work with brands when she's got a million whatever whatever and, blah, and why smaller creators get to get I remember these that I remember that that was just um, that was that was not like a and yeah 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 it just so, it just it just kind of like in your chest I feel you yeah the first thing I did the first thing I did was go to a page to see if she's got links or beacons or um, there's a couple other multi blah, 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 right? Because I'm like, okay, let me go check out the content to see, you know, if the content's good or whatever. I go to her Instagram, go to her Facebook, go to everything basically, desperately trying to find content and I didn't know what she represented. So, yeah. Whereas you go to Jess's page, yeah. anyone goes to Jess's page right now on Instagram and you see like her shit is clean. Yes. So I don't give a fuck how big your following is or whatever. You, If you have 500 followers, but your page looks absolutely professional, there should be no reason why a brand can't approach you. Because obviously they're going to want to work with you if you make exactly. and yeah. present products in such a beautiful way. And that entitlement of, oh, I have half a million followers, so fuck all the smaller creators, you should come to me instead. Yeah. Bullshit. I, yes, sis, if I could move someone, I would move that. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm going to have to bleep you. Sorry, okay, now I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna try and stop swearing now. I can bleep you. It's just like, so I don't edit my VODs, these ones, um, <sighs> the Let's Talk ones. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll bleep yours because I don't think we sweared a lot. But mm -hmm. I'll try to, I'll try to bleep you. I swear a lot. This is why you're supposed to brief me before. Sorry, me. Sorry. It's can going I just on tell YouTube. you that, 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 that mama was like messaging me 30 minutes before the time with a, a bunch of questions? And I'm like, my power's oh, out. Like, and then I was like cooking. Men. I'm sorry. Yo. Okay, I'm going to try and make markers for you to tell you where all the swearing was. Okay. To help you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's perfectly fine. I'm probably going to... It's it's Look, it's only... It's going to be under two hours of the stream. So it's going to be fine to, to sift okay, through. Okay, we're 36 okay. minutes in now. So, chat, 36 minutes in. After this, I'm not going to swear anymore. There we go. 36 oh. minutes in. <laughs> we out here. We out here. Uh. We're trying our best. Okay, so. What is your favorite hot food? Like spicy? No, like warm. So like not cold. Uh, but also what's your favorite cold food for afterwards? I really like stews. So like cabbage food. Um... Yeah, cabbage food. I really, really like like warm, like like a nice yeah, stew yeah, and yeah. rice. Also, I think pasta. Like everyone's like pizza or pasta, and I think I would choose pasta. I really love pasta. Okay. So yeah, but stew What's is your... like my number one. I could probably eat that every day. That's that's understandable. Stew is pretty good. And then your favorite mm. cold food? Mmm, cold food. Something that is just like cheesecake counts. No, that's that's the dessert yeah. question. But if you want to put cheesecake in there, we can fill that out now. That's not cold food. Yes, sis. cold food. You know, there's cold pastas out there. You could pick a cold pasta. Mm, I'm trying to think. So mm. maybe like a sandwich. Sandwich uh, works. Like yeah, avo and like chicken mayo mm. on a nice toasted sourdough bread. Oh, mm. I that's just ate. Damn, damn. I didn't swear now. <laughs> okay and then uh what's your favorite hot drink for like the winter time I what's your what's your, your go-to i drink a lot of ceylon tea um people don't know what ceylon tea is and it upsets me ceylon tea is black tea people like the regular like, but you know what it's not our fault of... because we're stuck with with people with wummies that come into the restaurants and they're like i love my sea what tea is that Swartia. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's Ceylon. 
So you never tell tells people like so you don't you like what's that? Yeah. Rooibos. I'm not, I'm, no, I'm, it's not rooibos. I I didn't know either no, because you know. I just know it as swartia. Yeah. I was actually you know what? I'm actually a little bit freaked out now because yesterday I was wondering what the fuck they meant by swartia. Yeah. What is the actual name for it? There you go. Now you know it's Ceylon. Thank you. So I like that with a little bit of milk, no sugar, and then maybe black coffee like in the mornings. Today I treated myself to like a cafe au lait kind of thing. Mm. Um, but usually in the mornings I'll just have a cup of black coffee, no sugar. I'm not. I don't have any sugar in our drinks. Yeah. And when I'm dearly less for something sweet, then it's hot chocolate, especially in winter. Oh, a nice cup of hot chocolate. Okay. And then what's your favorite cold drink? Coke Zero. Mm. I like Coke Zero and I love orange juice. Okay. Hey, Nuclear. I hope you guys are doing good. You'll find that I don't have like a hard favorite in anything. There's always like options. Like I don't Kida. have like a hard this and that. Yeah. Kid is saying that you must try. Remember that curry that I told you about before stream? That yeah. Kid's mom made? She's saying you must go try it. Her mom's cabbage curry. Cabbage it's really curry. Good. It's I love. really good. Like we call it quill course, no? Mm. Your moms make the best quill course. I love stews, Jack. Yes, yes. Mm. It was now with the cold weather. Chicken curry cabbage stew. It was so nice. Oh, that sounds nice. Kita, please come bring your mom here and make me some food. Oh, now I'm, I just ate, man. I cannot be salivating for no reason. All right. And now your favorite dessert. Uh, yeah, it's, I like carrot cake. I like cheesecake and peppermint tarts. There's this thing that Woolies does. It's called a milk tart cheesecake. You Ooh. can only find it at the cafes. Um, they found a way to mix milk tart and cheesecake into one thing, and it's magical and it's amazing. It's the best thing ever. And then Lumnos does a dessert cake called a Fabiola. Oh, I know. Which, I know you, that do you know one. Fabiola? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like custard and milk mm -hmm. tart with like a biscuit. Uh, bottom and yeah, 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 yeah. I think like a cream on top. I don't know, but it's just the perfect mix of everything, and it's incredible. So you are like a sweet tooth person, but more towards like the not chocolates, but more towards like the I don't know how to explain it. Man. Cakes and desserts, I love. I love uh, cakes and desserts. So I must bring like you a dessert if I ever visit you. Is what yes. you're saying? Yes, I got Absolutely. you. For sure. But like sugary drinks, I'm 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 not a sugary drink person. Like my Coke must be zero, my Sprite must be zero. Even juice, sometimes I'll water it down. Um, my coffees, my teas, no sugar, which is weird because I'm like, oh, no sugar in my tea, and then I'll have like the fattest piece of cheesecake with it. Oh, so, mm -hmm. yep. I don't know. But uh, like, you're compensating. You're you're having yeah, something balance. with no. Yeah, there you go. Balance, perfect balance. That's that's perfect. What is your favorite season? Like time of the year. Autumn. Nice. Good choice. Good choice. I like it. Is there like a the reason why you prefer it? Oh, yeah. There we go. Yes. Sorry. Do you like crunchy leaves? <laughs> yes. You when I see crunchy leaves, now I lose it. I have to go and like stomp on it immediately. Yes. There's no worse feeling oh. than stomping on a crunchy leaf and it doesn't And it doesn't crunch. crunch. Yep. That is the biggest heartbreak like ever. Do you know what I've always wanted to do that I just, you know, we can't do it because in Bloemfontein, every worm sweeps his lawn and throws away the leaves. Anyway, yeah, which is probably a good thing. Yes, yes. I want to throw myself into a pond. I just want to dive. Dream. Oh, God. We dogs are so lucky. Dream. You ever see those videos of dogs with the pile of leaves? And you'd like, what I would give to be you, doggo. I have not, but now I have another thing to Google. <laughs> it's so cute. It looks so and fun. And dogs in crunchy yes. leaves. Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. What was the... Okay, we actually also... They actually kind of already asked you that. I was going to ask what's the hardest part of streaming for you, but now I'm going to ask you what was the easiest part of streaming. Um, the easiest part of streaming for me, and this is, I think, a privilege, is dealing with trolls in that. Like, mm. I love it. When a troll comes mm. in too much, I'm like, oh, yes, it's my time it's to like... shine. Because you, you can't one-up yep. me. Because I have, basically, I have no shame, right? Mm. So if someone, like, comes for me, I'm going to come for myself even harder, and then they don't know what to say. Because it's like... And then it gets awkward oh, for them. Yes. Yeah, and they're like, oh, you were supposed to be offended. What? Yep. You know? Yep. Um, So that I've got, like, to a T. 
I've got a horrible, horrible habits of like degrading the people that come and try to troll me. Cause like, oh yeah, I've seen you fight people. You fight people. <laughs> um, but what I dearly love about you is like your ability to stand up for others. It's really beautiful to see, um, and it's very inspiring. Also, I've seen you fight bigots and transphobes and that, and I love for it. Um, it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're, you're actually. Amazing. I think like. I don't want to say you're the first person that said that, but like you're the first person that said that to my face. If that makes no, sense. No, trust me, people notice it and they respect you for it. Um, oh, well, like, it's because not don't... a lot of people do it. But like somebody has to. Of course, of course. So, um, so in my position, being a coloured, being a woman of colour, we found ourselves often trapped in that stereotype where if we were to do what you do or anyone else. We get labeled having a bad attitude and we get yes. labeled very quickly. Um, so you'll see someone like Androva and that she deals with a lot of people saying she's sassy or she's got a bad attitude when she's literally doing exactly what you're doing or Jess or whatever. Exactly. So the racism aspect of streaming and that is just not fun. Hmm. Um, which is something that we are, are talking about on a panel at Comic Con. It's going to be so really cool. spicy and saucy is, because we are not going to be holding back. Is that going to be streamed? I think Comic Con will be live streaming it. Yes, I'm not sure. Okay, then I'll um, keep my eyes out for that. That's gonna be absolutely spicy. Um, I already you know because they made the mistake of inviting me. Senpai, woo! And I don't hold back things. <gasps> Fifi, let's Hi, go. Fifi, let's go raided. We love Fifi. Hi, Fifi. Fifi got new boobs. <gasps> Wait, you got the booba? You got the booba. Oh Send my gosh, me. wait, yes, please. <laughs> Consensually, if you want. <laughs> hi, hi, Fifi. Welcome, everybody, with a raid. My name is Mama Succubus. Today, we are actually, today's not about me. Today, we're interviewing Rushka. Uh, lovely, lovely, um, another female streamer, content creator in South Africa, which I'm a little bit a big fan of. And uh, here we have Fifi, another very successful uh, content creator. Uh, streaming on the platform and raiding us, gracing us with her presence and her audience and her community. Thank you for trusting me with that. I appreciate that. Uh, for those of you that are new here, I'm Mama Succubus, and uh, every Thursday we do an interview with a creator in South Africa. And today, it's Rushka. So welcome oh, in. Please have Fifi next. Oh, that's actually not a bad idea. Fifi, what you doing next week? Girl, yo, DM, DMs, Fifi. What you doing? Want to see, see you, yeah. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Let me know. Let me know if you'd be interested, Fifi, because I'd actually love to interview you as well. I have so many people. I have so many people that I want to interview, dude. All right. Um, and then if you do have, like, a question about content creation or about Vrushka in general, uh, you can go ahead and ask that. Uh, I'm totally interested. Pog. All right. Well, let me know if you're doing anything next week, Thursday. And then we'll make it happen. I'm so there for that. Welcome back, Imposter. Let yeah, me quickly say, say yeah. hi, Jargon, and hi, Sleeper Dad. What's up? Hello. Welcome in. All right. We were talking about the racism. Yes, you joined yes, at a spicy students. time. Welcome yes. Welcome students. We're talking about racism. Good old racism. <laughs> um, I was, I hope I wasn't making you uncomfortable, Mama. I was like pointing you out. And no, like, God, no. Um, there is a privilege that exists, right? No, no, hundred percent. Uh, white allies, where they can say something and go completely chaotic or mm. even violent or whatever, and it's seen as admirable or it's seen as this and that. Yeah. The moment someone like me or Anjovo ever does it, then we you're seen as like dramatic or over the dramatic, top, or, uh, yeah. over the top, unnecessary, sassy you. attitude. All these buzzwords all the time. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of pushback. Um, which is why it's so important to have uh, white allies because you're seen as human, right? Um, yeah. A lot. It's sad that a lot of people don't see us no, yeah, as no. equals in that. So it's very yeah. difficult to get your message across when the people you're trying to get your message across to don't really respect you. Yeah. Um, which is why I also I also started going a little bit more quiet on Twitter. So I used to be very loud. I used to like always try and stand up for people. If I see bullying, if I see this happening, I speak up about it. But I've I noticed you've like held yourself back. I, I remember. decided I am completely, um, what's the word, disengaging from yeah. those types of things because every single time someone gets bullied or harassed or they deal with homophobia or ableism, whatever, and I speak up about it, then you've got 
10 white boys in the community that are making comments like, oh, there's always drama on South African Twitter. Why can't people just be lacquer? Da, da, da. And it's usually just like sub tweets directed at me, like I'm being dramatic and I didn't have to do that. Instead of facing the problematic person and being like, oh, that person shouldn't have done that. Yeah. There's always pushback to the women of color yes. that they're overreacting and yes. they shouldn't have done this and that. And I was just so tired of it. And I was like, you know what? I'll let the young ones fight their fight now. I've done enough fighting. I'm going to take a step back now. My message was clear. So yeah. I'm going to focus on just my content now. I'm going to be a little bit selfish. I'm going to, yes. you know, I'm going to retire from fighting the fight. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. No, I do. Um, I think I made, I actually made a tweet the other day and I don't know if it came across the way that I wanted it to. Because sometimes I hear something in my brain and I don't know if it's coming out properly when I speak it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when you said that, like, me as a white woman, I have privilege to say things that most, that a lot of women of color can't say, I 100% agree with you. Mm. I made a tweet the other day that, like, we have a lot of privilege with our white voices. We can say things, and yes, like, we're still women, we're still oppressed in a way, but there are women who are more oppressed than than white women <laughs> and i feel like it's it's a privilege that we should be able to use for the right reasons if that makes sense so like if, if you Absolutely. see something happening i i don't it's not an obligation that i feel but i feel like it, it has to be done it's almost a compulsion which probably isn't great but at least it's in the right direction um we're like if i have the privilege of being able to say something then i should because nothing bad can come from me speaking up mm. about that. Well, I mean, you definitely still get pushed back in that. Um, you still deal with a lot of flack, but I think it's a lot less than what... Oh, yeah, are, dude. Way, mm -hmm. way less. Way and less. Trust me, you are so respected from it. Like, the, the girlies of color, they know this. It's very sad to see that there's probably only two or three white girls in the whole of the South African community that is protecting us and standing up for us and constantly fighting out of all of the people there's only three that i can name so it's you it's jess and then i forgot the other time's name because i'm like brain fog but everyone else you. usually just but bum um yeah. bum deals with a lot of like and bum does so much in the background yeah um but most people are just quiet um and then we often live to just fend for ourselves yeah so yeah the brown girlies the brown and the black girlies they know this you're invited to all the cookouts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not sold, and I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad. I also want to acknowledge the fact that every, not everyone has the personality type to constantly fight in that. I yeah, a lot like of people. Wolf I know that they are pacifists yeah. in that, and it's fine. There's people um, who don't tolerate that, but they also they're very. I don't want to say they're fragile people. Not fragile. They don't like conflict, and that's completely exactly. Okay. And that's fine. And that's fine. Yeah, that's I'm fine. Just, I'm specifically looking towards the people who will see the shits and they still... only fight when it suits them or yes. when it's one of their bros that are in trouble. Yes. Or but then suddenly they become loud. Then suddenly they become this yeah. and that. I'm referring to those people. I literally saw a Bali tweet about don't be a P, be like a when um, shit was going down with Extrema. She was dealing with revenge porn. Mm. And we were all fighting that, rightfully. Mm. Yes. And then we had one of these boys like, oh, Twitter drama again, blah, blah, blah. don't be a pee pee licker. And then his bestie gets called, uh, let me not say it because then you're going to know what I'm talking about, gets called this and that. I know and already who you're talking about. all the bros come in and start fighting suddenly. And then yeah, suddenly no, no, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. For. Yeah. So it's just, it's so frustrating for like, to get these people to see us as humans and worth fighting for. And that is so ridiculous. Like it's yeah. 2023, but yeah. And you know, they thrive off of that day. Eh? They thrive off of putting women and women of color down, like yep. every chance that they get. And then all their friends chime in and they, they get off on that. And it's just, yep. it's gross. Yep, yep, yep. <sighs> like me, I start shaking when conflict arises. I feel you. Uh, yeah, what no, would be the like best that, step yeah. to take? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I just want to stress because I don't want anyone to feel bad. Like, no, no, yeah, no, go your, for it. Like, go for it. If it's not your personality type, if it's not, you're not the type of person that. No, you know, no one's telling you to hop on the chopping block for anyone. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But if you are typically the type of person that if a situation does upset you or you want to correct someone you usually do you know handle it in a certain way if you do 
approach someone and confront them and stand up for people, but you only do it when it conveniences you and it suits you, or, you know, whatever, then mm. you're a piece of shit. Mm. I put rusty on them lol <laughs> yeah yeah rusty rusty rusty's heart is definitely in the right place Rusty also deals with yeah. a lot of fla flack yeah a lot of flack Soldan's asking here let me let me know when when we can ask Soldan's question because i feel like go i'm gonna it, go lose the question are you sure i'll just keep talking if you don't so just go for it i would be completely fine with that how about we finish our questions and then we actually talk yeah, 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 let's go. And then we can actually get really deep into this because I, I can talk about this shit all night. Like, I think it's so important. Mm -hmm. uh, you do it and take it in too far in social media areas. Uh, what would be the best step to take to teach or learn about how to stand up for each other? Oh, that's a very, very good. Some people might want to stand up for, for for other people, but they might not know how exactly. That's a really good question, actually. Yeah. Um, and I will use an example of one of the times I did something where I thought I was being helpful and, um, you know, an ally and that, but I was actually being harmful. Um, so I'll, I'll answer your question, but let me first say what I wanted to say. Um, mm. It was during Pride Month. Um, I... There's a couple of streamers, LGBTQA streamers that I watch and follow in that, but I don't necessarily chat in these streams. I usually just look um, while I'm working or whatever. So I didn't, there was this one particular streamer that I didn't have a relationship with at the time, but I've been like a long time follower of him. And that month in <clears> particular, <throat> I wanted to stream mostly um, people from the LGBTQ community and that. Um, so this particular stream, I was really excited about raiding them and that. And I started up my raid and I sent my people away. And she like received it so coldly. And I was so hurt and angry because I was like, wow, like, what did I do? You know, she was just like, um, why'd you raid me like that? And I was hurt and I was angry at the time and I couldn't understand what the hell I did wrong because I was like, you know, wow, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be an ally and you're being a bitch to me. You know, I was like ranting. And then... Um, I spoke to someone of the community about it. So, okay, mm. let me, let me, because I'm being a bit vague here. This person was trans, right? A trans mm. woman. And I couldn't understand what I did wrong. So I spoke to another trans friend and she was like, um, does this person know that you're a safe space? Does this person know that, that do they know you? Because do you know how much ra hate rates uh, yeah, 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 people yeah, get you're right, during yeah. that month? Um, if you want to be an ally, if you want to help people, you need to go to that people directly and ask them how you can be an ally. Um, because a lot of the time, if you don't understand a community or if you don't experience what they're experiencing, a lot of the time you're helping can actually be harmful. Yeah. So when my friend told me this, I was like, oh my God, I'm a piece of shit. Like, why didn't I even think of that? But I can't possibly think about that because I've never experienced it before. I've never had to deal with, I've never, I've been fortunate that I never dealt with the hatred. So I completely understand if I put myself in that person's shoes, This seemingly new person comes in and raids um what are the intentions you know you don't you don't know um <clears throat> so yeah to answer your question it's always just best to ask someone like hey how can i help even if it's not to be loud and fighting people publicly or whatever if it's something to do in the background which by the way another thing that bum and a few people do in the background um you can contribute to that as well. So it's just yeah. They um, they don't really. Yeah. You don't have to fight people on Twitter. You could be part of a team that handles things behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah. Um, that also helps. But message message people being like, hey, are you okay? How can I help? Um, is there ways that I can you know assist or what yeah. can I do going forward? It's always good to have conversations with people. And it's gonna be. Us. It's. I feel like from <clears throat> first experience, um, like I wanted to be an ally for for as long as i can remember but i think one of the most awkward conversations which was very necessary to have is asking my friends of color um if i'm stepping out of line um and it it it, it is a bit of an awkward situation um mm. <laughs> but it's definitely a necessary one because you don't know if your efforts your efforts might be have good intentions but you don't know what could come of it mm. So you need to make sure that you're doing the right thing, which is why, like, I've I've asked most of my friends that that are people of color 
to like call me out if they see something that I've said that is out of line, even if it's in defense of people of color. Yeah. Um, or even the even, even though I'm, I'm part of like the LGBTQ plus community, I've I've asked them as well to like please call me out if I've said something that was like out of line because you don't know like yeah. And there it's, will always it's... be a blind spot if you're not like loving like yes. the experience oh. that you yes. will always have a blind spot and there will always be something that you overlook and you just can't possibly think about. Hundred um, percent. So speaking to them will always be helpful. So yeah. Them. So I think I think that's a that's a good thing. Speak speak to somebody that you know is going through what you're trying to help with and ask them what would be the best way to help. Yeah. Hey kitty cat. Um You were saying? I'm just greeting one of your chatters. I see some there. Yeah. I, I said hi just now, but I like mimed it. I was like oh, yes. while you were talking. Okay. Uh, let's quickly get through the last of these questions and then we are going to switch back to chatting because actually I was really enjoying that conversation. Um, Alright. What was the funniest part in your streaming career? One moment that happened that was the funniest thing to you. It doesn't have to be specifically streaming. It can be content creation as a whole, including streaming. I have so many, honestly. What's the first one that pops up? We just want one for now. That time I threw up on stream. You threw up on stream? Yeah, the VOD's still there. Not the VOD, the clip. Someone clipped it and I never bothered taking it off. And I love how... It's actually such a huge deal, but it's a complete... It goes so underrated all of the time. People are worried about me messing milk on my keyboard. I literally have a clip out there of me throwing up. So I always... I find it so funny. People are like, oh, you miss milk on your keyboard. Oh, she's a spit. I'm like, you don't even know the half of it. Yeah. Chat, if you go check my clips, you'll find a clip of me like throwing up. Like just full on vomiting. It's Holy the, shits. And I'm pretty sure that's... Are you okay? Our band. No, I ate one of those disgusting beans. Um, so Zube in the chat, mm. we were raising, we, we had a little community goal. Sorry, Zube, I don't know if you, she, sorry, it's too late now, but um, we got together to um, build Zube a PC. And one of the incentives is if you do, every five, do, um, every five dollars that gets donated, I eat one of those beans, the bean boozled stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this particular flavor was canned dog food. And I ate it and I just hauled. But luckily I grabbed the bucket in time and it was just like Whoa. And then obviously chat was like, they clipped it and they laughed at me. That's mean though. I'd be so <laughs> worried. I checked if I was okay after laughing. Oh my but, god. Yeah, no, I was fine. I was fine. It was funny. It was a funny okay. moment. So that was like one of the moments that stand out for me. And every time people are like, oh, why are you eating cereal out of a lace packet? Or why are you doing this and that? I'm like, are you new here? Are you new? <laughs> you must be new. <laughs> okay. Um, ooh, is there anybody locally that you would like to collaborate with that you haven't yet? Anyone. If it could be anyone local. Mm, no. I've, I was fortunate enough to collab with all the liquor people already, all people that I find interesting or whatever. There's a lot of big names out there that are actually booster. So, mm. Yeah, um, and then I don't know if Caramel Game accounts, but I've kind of already yeah, collabed fucking with him. yeah, dude, it does. Of no, it I does. actually collabed with Caramel Gamer. I was supposed to marry Caramel Gamer in GTA when he was doing that role play thing. Mm. So he was Baba Tunde, and my character was Frankie. But he was so put off by my character in GTA that he refused to marry me. Oh. <laughs> But the whole plan was to get married to me in GTA and that we're going to have like this big wedding. And then he dumped my character Frankie because I was too weird. I was too weird for him. But my whole goal was to make this character as weird as possible. Um, so technically, so Frankie, you, you succeeded. Technically. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mission accomplished. So he had his, he's a runner. So he had his vanilla wedding with his hot whoever he found. In that vanilla spot. wedding. I love how you're calling it a vanilla wedding. Vanilla wedding. He, <laughs> Papa Tunde did not appreciate Frankie. <laughs> So Frankie was a freegan. <sighs> you know about freeganism, right? No, what is that? It's people that scratch in bins and stuff to find like food and that and they just like eat from bins because that's like free food. So freeganism is people that practice okay. like uh, bun hopping and then like food that I've seen, isn't I've quite I've seen off. people grab um, stuff that's practically brand new that stores just show off, throw exactly. off the shelves. So that's I get freeganism. that, yeah. So okay. that's freeganism. Um, so Frankie was a hardcore freegan. Uh, Baba Tunde asked Frankie out on a date and to go grab coffee and then Frankie's like oh I know a spot and then Frankie took Baba Tunde around the corner to the bins and he was like look let's find some coffee <laughs> <laughs> oh 
out of caramel came and broke out of character. He was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Needless to say, he didn't want to marry me. Okay. Um, but I would love to do another collab with him. Um, yeah, and um, I really love doing this weekly collab with you as well. Um, I think I, I've just been fortunate in that. I've already pretty much collab with a lot of my favorite creators, even in Hunt mm. um, on Monday. Well, first of all, there was two Hunt moments for me. Um, Luke and Live is one of my favorite Hunt creators. If you go on, TV, on his YouTube channel, he's called the Bob Ross of Hunting. Um, he's just so incredibly peaceful and he's insanely good at Hunt. Mm. Um, but he gives such beautiful, peaceful vibes and he plays the most peaceful music while he takes out servers and stuff. And he's just such a pleasant human being. Um, I got to play Hunt with him. And that was such a big moment for me. He's jaded me and followed me in that. And that was so big to me because like, he's not he's not local though, he's international. And no, like, I was uh, I was about to ask you who do you want to work with internationally that you have Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was special. And then another Hunt streamer, Delacroix, I got to play Hunt with him on Monday, which was insane because he was rated number three in the world for kills in Hunt. And then he was playing with me. I even gave him a whole speech before we played. I was like, listen, I'm not good at the game. Like, I understand the game, but like, aim wise, and that it's not good. You're going to get very frustrated with me. And if you get frustrated with me, I'm going to I'm gonna leave and I'm going to be upset with you. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's going to be fine. We're going to meme. It's going to be fun or whatever. And he's so sweet. He was even like, um, he even messaged me afterwards. He was like, I hope I wasn't, you know, I hope I was nice. And I was like, no, it was cool. It was so much fun. So that was very special to me as well. Mm. He fumbled the bag. XQC is a Rushka stream enjoyer too. Yeah, that was wild. What? XQC watched me play a bit of Overwatch during the event. That was wild. And of course, Ooh. I wasn't playing well because I don't play Overwatch. So I didn't know what I was doing half the time. So. Oh, it's fine though. Yeah, that was that was that was a big moment also. That's cool. Yeah. All right. That's really cool. And then uh here here we we're getting to the very very important questions now, okay? You all of these are important. No, no, these are the most important. Mhm. Mm Except for the racism one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Marvel hero. Which Marvel hero is your favorite? I like um practically i like dr strange oh okay that's that's cool okay yeah, no just because well, what you can do like yes favorite marvel supervillain thanos yeah i like thanos i love thanos okay cool 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 i get i get i get i get his his motives i get why you want no to I, me too don't don't but don't get, get me it. wrong um favorite dc hero batman nice and I really DC. love that Batman is a human just like all of us. Yeah. But is easily one of the strongest superheroes. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And then your favorite DC villain? Um, I don't know, actually. I don't think I have a favorite DC villain. They're all kind of... They, well, I'm going to offend someone, but they're all kind of generic, you know? They all have the same sort of formula. Probably Bane. I think Bane was the most interesting to me, but that also could be just because of the movies. It was acted out so well. Like, I would mm. say Joker, but I feel like Joker is such a generic answer as well. What's yours? Poison Ivy. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. I've always been a fan. I can see that. <laughs> She's All cool. right. And then, uh, are you a cat person or a dog person? You can be both, but which one do you lean towards? Mm, cats. Particularly Maine Coons. I think they're very cool. Mm, that's cool. And then I have a question for you. If you were a perfume, what would you smell like? Um, I wear a lot of uh, Eau de Wood from Tom Ford. That is No, no, no. I'm saying if we could thing. bottle you as a person. What would I smell like? Yes. What would that perfume smell I like? I would be a smell of like a woody sandalwood sort of like a sandalwood woody almost leather with like notes of fucking maybe like some tea tree there. It would be like a fresh like yeah a fresh but woody smell. Mm. Okay. That's yeah. cool. 
Kita says that Rushka should meet you should meet their cats, which is true. They have very cute cats. I, I had like pictures. full blown uh, allergy reactions, but I was popping them allergics as they by their houses because I could to not cats? stop. Yeah, deathly, but okay, not deathly. That's an exaggeration. My mm. my like throat swells and like closes up, and my eyes swell shut and stuff. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but it's fine because uh, I just popped some allergics because I couldn't keep myself like away and from dogs, the cats. And dogs, are you allergic to dogs as well? I'm also allergic to dogs, not as bad as cats though, but I actually have a dog, so yeah. Okay. Um, and then I have uh, another question for you. Mm -hmm. How did you start the serial series? This is getting a little bit more personalized now. Um, the serial series, I wanted to do sort of an interview style thing with creators, right? But I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. Not just two I, people fucking talking to each other the whole time. Which is exactly. nice, by the way. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no the this, shade. Is why, this is why I don't have friends. This is actually why I don't have friends, guys. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Listen, we're doing my version of things and we're doing your version of things eventually. No, but like for you, I'm having so. a lot of fun actually. Mm. That's good. Talking. So yeah, I just wanted to put like a bit of a curveball in and I think one of the things that inspired me was like Hot Ones. Um, do you watch Hot Ones when they eat yes. spicy wings and stuff? Yes, yes. And I then they talk so to funny. each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I didn't want to copy that because people would be like, why are you copying Hot Ones? Mm -hmm. I think it's super smart what you've done. And then the fact that you guys have like something something obscure that you eat out of every episode it's so cool yeah it's becoming a bit challenging for me because there's only so many weird things i can eat out of now mm. like i'm gonna eventually run out of weird stuff um mm. but i've got some like fingers crossed from each other i've got like a potential brand partnership coming up so i i might actually use this one of this brand's items and eat cereal out of it so i got my fingers and toes crossed you can't see them but they crossed our... It might be uh, the Mama Succubus and Rushka serial review. I hope so. Ugh. Okay. My questions are now officially finished that were written down here. Who was your favorite person? Like, who did you have the most fun with, with your serial interviews? I want to know the creator's name. You, you're going to hurt someone's feelings now. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, which one did you find the funniest? Um, like the funniest interaction, and only because this is like my in real life. Light lungs is here. Light lungs. How's it going? Thank you for the follow. Love loud lungs. We built, we did the Lego yeah, thing. The Lego. Together. I was I was looking. I was looking. Mm. Such a Lego -o look. Mm. Such a Lego -o look. You are Lego -o look. Um. So one of like my in real life friend odd prophets because I think we've already got that friendship dynamic and like we bounce off each other and understand each other. It was more of us just sort of having fun and just naturally like the conversation mm -hmm. was just flowing and it was just it was a lot of fun and we were just laughing and talking gak. That's cool. Um, oh, that was also the first time I think I spilled milk. So everyone's like, "Oh, you spilled milk, didn't you?" I'm like, "You must be <laughs> new. <laughs> Again, you must be <laughs> new. Yeah, I'm always. Are missing. you new here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Although I enjoyed like a lot of my a lot of my series. Um, husband was so funny. He, that he's so funny. He just talks a lot of guck. Yo, he actually broke. He's so intelligent. He actually broke my brain. Like I had I had to keep up with him because he's so incredibly smart. I would That's I would cool. definitely do another one with him. That's cool. All of them. All right, chat. Would you guys mind if we took a quick, let's say, five-minute break to go pee, to have a smunk, to do the things? Welcome back. You're muted, by the way. That blanket looks so fluffy. I want to go get mine. Pepe bomb. Um, Hello. Got this pepe bomb um, for very cheap. Can I go get my blanket quickly? Go get your blankie. I'll be right back, chat. Chat, it's so fluffy. It's very fluffy. And you can get it at Pep Home. And you know how cheap Pep is, so. And they've got it in like different colors. This is my blankie. <sighs> hey. Look at us, comfy hour. Yeah, boy. 
do my cross leg thing here quickly. When is Rishka trying to play games with me on stream? Tell them when you stream. He plays on Sundays, but he usually plays well. He should um, be playing on Wednesdays as well. He should be streaming. But he's been so busy with work recently. Shame. Yeah, yeah. I know that work balance, content life, sectic. Yeah. <sighs> Dude, I feel winded. What's wrong with me? Hello. Did you run? Did you run to the PC? I jogged a little bit, <laughs> but like it wasn't that much effort. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you knock your arm? <gasps> oh yes, sis. Oh no, 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 no. No, oh, Mark, stop being so cute. I swear. <laughs> Why must he oh. always look, make other partners look so cocky? Yes, sis. <laughs> so tired of him, like being more perfect. I'm more I don't even know partner. how. I don't... <laughs> I don't even know how he saw that because, like, he's got his headphones on. I usually can't hear much when he has his headphones on, so I don't know how he caught a glimpse of that. I'm Mark, and I pay attention. <laughs> I'm, I'm so perfect. With my kind eyes, my kind soul. <laughs> Legit, dude, you need to meet him and you need to actually look him in the eyes. No, Mark? because I will actually like I will actually melt because he's got such even like on his stream and that he's got such a kind like presence about him. Mm. Like angelic almost, you know what mm. I mean? I, I explained it the other day and I, I figured this was the perfect way to explain it. Soldan has the kind of stare where like every time he looks at someone it looks like he's falling in love. <laughs> Did you watch Mean Girls? <laughs> I did, yes, I did. There's an episode where I think his name is Nick. Oh, I'm going to have to find the episode because I'm going to butcher the explanation. But there's this old Asian man in a, like a sauna or spa or something where Nick like goes to the spa and he's just chilling and he's just venting to this um, old, older Asian man. And the man doesn't say a word. He just stares at Nick the whole time with kind eyes. And then every time Nick like looks back at him, he, like he starts healing, you know? <laughs> Like, he just gets clarity and, like, he just keeps talking like it's his therapist or whatever. And this man just looks back at him smiling every time and nodding his head. And Nick's, like, just oh. going off, like, yeah. I was, I rewatched, I rewatched the tattoo stream today for the, when we did the, the Let's Talk with, with Kale. Oh, yeah? And we were doing the tattoo thing and it was his <clears> turn <throat> to, like, get a tattoo. And he was like this because the tattoo was here. So he was lying like this on the table, but he was like looking up at her and I like moved my camera because it was on his arm. So I included his face. <laughs> there was <laughs> Just the way that he was looking at her. It was so beautiful. I was like, you guys need to see this. You need to experience what I experienced. And I put the camera up and the whole the whole chat started frothing and melting. Oh, not us melting for your man's dear life. I know. We could all melt in unison, it's okay. Oh my god, this oh, oh, This is so nice. I love this blanket so much. So what is your favorite art beverage, by the way? I haven't Mine. been asking you any questions. Yeah, but you see, like this isn't about me, this is about you, girl. What's your hot beverage of choice? Coffee. Hmm. Black, milk, sugar, what? Coffee with a dash of milk and two sugars. Okay, oh, that's sweet. Um, um this Not one really, takes I it with three. <gasps> and like, I know, I think his kid sometimes takes it with four, depending on the day. I used to have it with three, because like my parents both have three sugars in their coffee, so I learned from them. But recently, I don't know, I like a strong coffee. So mm. the more sugar you add, the less, it kind of takes away from the actual coffee taste. Yeah, yeah, I so. get that. I used to, I used to do two sugars in my drinks, and then when I gave up sugar. By the way, if you give up sugar, do you know you get sick? Like if you give up anything in your yeah, diet, it's like a withdrawal. Sugar, sick. Yeah, I had hard sugar withdrawal symptoms. I felt fluish for like two weeks, mm. and now if someone accidentally puts sugar in my tea or coffee, it actually tastes so unbearably sweet. Like I can't do it, which is again so weird because I literally eat so much cakes and desserts yeah. and stuff so I, yeah. I can't explain it but i can't do it in food or um yeah i can't drink dishes. coffee if it's too sweet mm. i always leave like half the cup there and then i feel <laughs> bad but um no i i definitely understand what you're saying though i've always been a fan of like really strong coffee hi we bad and um i don't know the so like i was a barista for like a year and a half Ooh. um so 
and I've been like in the food industry for like a decade. Um, mm. So you know your stuff. Yeah. And so like for like a whole mm. year and a half, I was just drinking like filter coffee every day. And then I like that, I left that job and I was still a barista, but then that place closed down during COVID. Very similar situation to like yours, mm. you know? <clears throat> and um, I went back home <laughs> And like every cup of coffee that I made myself tasted like shits and I knew I. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to add like an extra fucking spoon of the shits until it feels good. Was it like weak ass coffee? We it was fucking it for weak ass. Okay, no, I like Dude, Frisco. Um, I'm, I can make a, surprisingly enough, so I, I know how to make cappuccinos, but with Frisco and re coffee. Ooh. To where you don't know it's Frisco or re coffee. Dark Wing oh, underscore Duck 12 just sub, resubscribed for 33 months. Play have an awesome stream. Okay. Shit, fuck the prime alert. Let me. Thank you. I appreciate you. Let me play this prime for you. Let me pause my music and we can play that for you. Give me two seconds. You've, You've just, just activated, activated your Twitch, Twitch prime. I'm on my channel. channel. Have you ever wished that, that you could still directly support your base streams, even in those rough days? Well, if you link your Amazon Prime. prime your Twitch account, you get to do exactly that by getting one free subscription every month. Don't forget to use your Twitch Prime to support your favorite Twitch stream each month. And thank you that this month's Twitch Prime is used right here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the prime. I hope that you enjoy last stream, Thar Thar. Thank you for 33 months. Holy <laughs> freaking schmackamoly. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, Darkwing. Wait, where were we? I don't even know. I don't know. Ah, coffee. There we go. Ah, <gasps> yes. I had, um, I moved into like my own place since my divorce after that because my streaming like really took off. Um, and I lived by myself and eventually like I ran out of coffee once <laughs> and I got, I was for like that whole week, I felt so shit. I felt sick. Did you like, get the flu -y. withdrawal? Yeah. I didn't even know that I was addicted to caffeine up until that point. I was like, I feel so shit. You see, I feel so tired all the time and I feel like I'm, I'm getting sick, but I'm not getting to the point where I'm sick, you know? Mm. And my, my, my mom was doing like a drive-by and I was like, bring me coffee. And she brought me like a little tub of coffee. Mm. And then all these symptoms just stopped same day. And I was like, am I addicted to this shit? That's when I first realized that I have a caffeine addiction, so. It's crazy yeah. to think about these kinds of it things. It is, right? Uh, the lighter the blend, the stronger the coffee. Let me tell you something. Ireland has some intense coffee. When I came back from Ireland, everything tasted like piss. I don't think I've ever had like proper Irish coffee. People is will that tell thing, you right? Irish coffee is a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like people, like I, I have friends there that are like, no, it's not different to this coffee. I was like, you tell me that. When I came back home, you know Nescafe Gold. Mm. I was drinking like four to five teaspoons of Nescafe gold in a cup because it still tasted like piss. So, whatever so we were drinking. Coffee now. I really like that Egbert's Egg. Ek, ek, oh, yeah, yeah. Dao, Dao, ek, Dao. Egbert or something. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Good. I, I really always like that when coffee. it's not special. And I love collecting the jars. The jars are so nice. I collect the crap out of those jars. Mm. And I put my spices in that in. I put like pastas and, and sugar. It's mm. my sh my sugar and tea and everything in that. It's like I'm gonna send you a picture of my little these. coffee station. It's just like empty Dow's jars of like mm. coffee beans or whatever in it. Kida Kida's family did something pretty cool. They took Nescafe jars and they repainted over them. Mm. Yeah, really cool, really pretty. Um, but I actually have to repurpose all these coffee jars. For oh yeah, dude. For storage. For sure. I like I like those jars. I recently washed out a peanut butter jar because I want to use it for sweets. That's big brain. Yeah, That's and big then. Brain. 
Um, so like his favorite color is blue. So I used to take like every time I bought myself or got M and M's or anything, I would take out all the blue ones and put them in a jar. So I gave him <gasps> like a awesome. jar. <laughs> I gave him like a jar filled to the brim. Like you a, can make me sick. Like a jar like this, filled to the brim with blue M and M's. You to make so, me sick. <laughs> so I have one that I'm saving for jelly beans now. Mm. Um, Do a mix but... and match for him. I have like a big ass jar of blue M and M's. No, 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 no. no. Those. Everything. Those, those, beans. I'm doing two jars, one for me and then blue ones for him. Because I like jelly beans. <laughs> I won't be able, won't be able to like not the, eat them. Uh, regular sweet ones. The regular ones, but I also don't mind the sour ones that yeah. much. I was going to say something. Oh yeah, I have a coffee machine. And yeah, I have House one? of, uh, oh, I don't know. My sister gave it to me. But it's like, it's like, it makes a pot of coffee, like a glass pot. Oh, the coffee pot. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <clears throat> And I use House of Coffees. That's the coffee that I use. Mm, I just buy whatever's on special. So we got the Russell Hobbs one. Mm. The coffee pot. Russell Hobbs is such a shit brand, by the way. Like, that stuff don't last. Like, it always breaks. Like, every time I buy a Russell Hobbs item, it just breaks within, like, two years or something. Anyway, this coffee pot is still alive. Um, yeah, don't talk to me about, like, kitchen items, because I have so few. Teddy, when she came to visit, she bought me a strainer, because I didn't have a strainer. Yeah, like and then when I went to Kita's house, they gave me knives because I don't have knives. I, yeah, like I'm that. I'm running out of teaspoons at the moment, so I need to go buy teaspoons. I have like <laughs> barely anything in my kitchen. You must come right. Yes, sis. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your get your damn teaspoons, please. No sour and ones, then, please. Um, I also have the Dolce Gusto machine. So it's the coffee pot and the Dolce Gusto. And funny enough. I usually just make me instant coffee most of the time. Yeah, me too. I'm too mm. lazy to make a whole ass pot and then load shedding happens and the pot gets cold. Mm. Like, why would I do that to myself? Yeah, it is an effort. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a Whoa. portable power station. Down. Was that a Did child you know that? in the background? Yeah, people are fucking loud here. Yeah, <laughs> they, they don't give a fuck when I'm streaming also. You don't know, nope. you know how many times I'm like BRB and then I go out like, I'm like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> I'm streaming! Please speak me! <laughs> Yeah, what I used to do when I when I, <laughs> what I used to do at my old place before this place is uh, Lucian would usually like run in from the back. You'd see him like in that corner usually, and there would be a door, and he'd run through. And I'd eat. I had like hotkeys for mute and unmute, so I'd hit my mute key. I'd be like, "Get the fuck up!" Yep. And they'd be like, "Sorry, sorry, sorry." Sorry, like he. That's I'm me. not. I'm not exaggerating. He'd stand there going, "Sorry, sorry, 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 sorry." <laughs> yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> doesn't give a shit. They, they, they don't. Get, they are demons. <laughs> Hello, beautiful ladies. Hello for whalesies. How you doing, whalesies? <clears throat> Hi. I'm so cozy now. This was such a good idea. We bad as a question. Ooh. What is the question you get that's about streaming that you get asked the most, but you are so sick of answering it? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you got an answer already in your head. <laughs> Try and guess. Try and guess. Uh, I'm almost like typecasted at this point as myself and our lady. If you don't know who our lady is, that's Androva. Androva, yeah. Um, we are typecasted as the women of color gamers in the country. So when panels happen and stuff i already know before the time if i get if i get invited to a panel i already know what they're going to ask me to speak on they're not going to ask me to speak on my expertise on anything related to gaming or streaming they're going to ask me about my tokenism mm. because it needs to make them look good um mm. so i need to constantly well, how constantly how is it rishka how is it streaming as a person of color in this industry <laughs> like, yes no it's yes. become so automated already like what i say and how i say it um, so when I bring it up, obviously it's fine. Um, but like when I'm expected to speak on those topics, it just mm. becomes so like overzealous and boring. And ideally, am the, the the token brown girl in gaming in this country, right? Mm. Not to like make myself like uh, mm. or anything. Mm. But South Africa is a small space, so you can literally yeah. have 500 followers, and you can yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, you know, like yeah. Um, and that lady is the black girl of gaming in this country. So when they want their token or their buzzword or whatever, they call you guys. They call us. Yeah, we we gotta fill that role, and it's like such an idol every time. No, I get um, you. 
but I'm getting old now, so I'm gonna be old new soon, and then someone else is gonna take the the torch or whatever, and it's gonna be their problem. But you I'm basically me. I'm basically typecasted. As the what does typecasted mean again? It's when you're stuck in one role, like an actor or something like that plays a superhero role. Now they're typecasted as just a superhero. Or someone okay. that's typecasted as just a villain all the time in movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they struggle to get out of that okay. sort of box that they were placed in. Kale is like, oh no. Kale knows. Yeah. Well, well, Kale, actually, you're known for like a lot of things. You're not just typecasted. Kale saves all of us. But I oh, am. Man, it doesn't matter how that. good I am at anything or what I know. I'm a literal mathematician, but if people want me to talk on things, they'll be like, so tell me what you experience as a woman of color in gaming. Mm -hmm. And then I would really just like automate it. I, it's not fun. <laughs> you have the, you go on autopilot and the answer just comes out at this point. Yeah. But on, mm -hmm. one day I'm hopeful that I'm going to be invited to a gaming event where I actually just talk about gaming. Mm -hmm. For and me, again, it's... I want to stress, sorry, I, I want to stress that like, it, when please. other creators like invite me to things like this, um, I did something with Skara yesterday as well. It's not like that with other creators. It's usually like gaming in general and we can just talk in conversation close. But when it's from a brand or an org, it's almost always like, play that role for us, please. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not similar <laughs> for me, but I know what you, I know kind of like what you mean by that because... Um, a lot of the times if I am like interviewed for anything, it always reverts back to, so what's your, ex yeah, what's your experience being a woman uh, in the gaming industry? And uh, I'm like, uh, and I used to be like super passionate about it. I guess I still am in a way. I, I still love talking about it, but then I've had to answer the question so many times that it's automated now. It's like, mm. <laughs> there's no, there's no life in what I'm saying anymore. So it's maybe that's why people don't want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> So this might be like a hot topic or controversial opinion or whatever. We love controversial opinions. Bring it. But I genuinely feel like women of gaming, it's not a thing anymore. We're not unicorns anymore. We're no. not special. It's completely normal now. We've been normalized for a very long time. So I don't know why. I don't know if it's capitalism or something, if it makes people more money to make it a thing still. Yeah, I feel like it's not a big deal anymore. The it's harassment not. is, sure. Of course, of course. But, but it's like a being a female... In general, it's not yeah. specific to gaming yeah. or tech or anything. Yeah, um, being a female gamer is not a big deal anymore. No. Billions of like, us do it. It's normal. There's yeah. so many of us. It's completely normal, yet it's still made to be this unicorn. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's tiring. Yeah. I try really hard to normalize that aspect. But a lot of the times, that's what brands and orgs want from you is to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the title they've given you, and that's all they want to hard focus on. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how we can change that and how we can continue to normalize it. Actually, I know a few <gasps> things. Gail! There are, there are a lot of pick-me's. Pick-me's are a big problem in oh, yeah. gaming. Um, the ones that specifically want to be known as gamer girls. I'm a gamer girl. Do you know what, though? Do you know, is it wrong to say I'd rather be harassed online by a dude than run into a pick-me? I get what you're saying though. Because I like I feel so heartbroken when I run into a pick me. It's like, like girl. I feel like I'm not like other girls and I can't be friends with other girls because girls are not easy to be friends with and I'm a gamer girl, so I'm better than other girls. <gasps> Do you wanna hear something fucked? Yeah. I used to not be able to be friends with girls. But were you a pick me? So there's so you I so hope you not. to make friends with people in general, right? For whatever reason. Look, I'm not, like, I'm not I'm not perfect. Specifically. I think I used to be a pick me. I think that I used and that's to a good I think thing there to was admit, a though. I think there was a time in my life where like I was like <gasps> there was a time in my life where I was complaining about the booby streamers like years ago. Mm. Before I grew a brain. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um and boobs. So I have own. some opinions <laughs> on that as well. And like I used to be I used to be pretty pretty bad. I used to even like I used to say, Yana, I all my friends used to be like uh, guys at school but that's just because I was like a fucking tomboy and a lot of the girls at school were Afrikaans very prim and proper and it was oh, difficult okay. for me to bond with so them. So again that's environmental right? Yeah. Because where I was from there was a lot of tomboys so you probably would have had a lot of girls um, as friends and you like three area. three tomboys in my whole school and yeah. we were like so hundreds in a grade. Thing. That's not a um, what's the word misogynist or Yeah but the or problem or is it made um, it, it created from that in the very very beginning years of my streaming that was my personality was oh i never had chick friends i was bad yeah, yeah. 
I'm just so one I, of the guys. I think, I'm a guy. I'm, I'm, a guy I'm one of the guys. I think uh, I, I'm so silly. I'm so crazy. I think I think I was a pick me, and then um, I don't know what changed. Maybe I just grew up. I don't know. I was never mean to other girls. Um, that was never me. Um, I always tried to be friends, but I was also also um very scared. I was fucking terrified of women, especially As in the gaming space. Are. <laughs> I was fucking terrified, yo. I was like, I don't wanna. I, I, I was so scared that people would be mean. And especially when I was first introduced into the community, I was like, I'm so fucking scared to like socialize because I don't know if they're gonna like me. And, you know, I'd rather just stay in my own little bubble rather than. But ugh, I'm so happy that I didn't. I've made mm. so many wonderful, wonderful people and learned so much and become so much better than what I was. Mm. Um,. So yeah, whenever I do see a pick me, like I'd rather run into somebody harassing me than yeah. running into a pick me because my heart just kind of breaks for that person. Like, girl, we could yeah, have been it does besties. come from a lot of insecurity and overcompensation yeah. as well. I think. Yeah. Um, because Before it's I so brain. easy being friends with women. Like, oh, really, yeah. women are so gentle and kind in general. It's just so freaking easy. Um, and anyone that says women are bitches, women are this. I've heard men speak together. They are mm. bitches. They gossip a lot. I've heard men get together and gossip. So it's mm. not a woman thing. Like, yeah. It's an overall human it's thing. It's a general thing. Yeah. Um, Gail, Gail said here, and I thought that was a very good thing. I was, he, he says, gotta tell them, ask me questions as if I was a dude. I actually feel like I want to do that now. Because everything yeah. that I get asked, and I feel like a lot of, a lot of, you know, chicks deal with this kind of shit it's a lot of femme presenting people as well mm. like how what's your experience as a female or a femme presenting person in the gaming scene those aren't the, the questions i mean yeah i don't know how to explain it man i'm just tired no, of the same you. question over yeah, and over I get again you. it gets it gets stale it gets boring men are emotional and love gossip <laughs> don't let anybody tell you otherwise honey my partner behind me is the biggest gossip queen when he gets <laughs> home and i'm like so listen 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 do you want to hear the tea and he goes the neighbors <laughs> and i go no, yeah we all love it honestly like we all love tea but it's just this whole idea that it's only for women and women are bitches and catty and yeah, women yeah, can't yeah. get along with other women because they're bitchy and catty and it's just i once at one of my um, previous workplaces we were assigned like teammates or something for like projects or whatever and mm. i was assigned with this like very cool sweet friendly chick and one of the men flat out said, as as we were being assigned, he was like, "You can't put them together. You you don't put two women together. Like they'll fight. It's just a bad idea." Oh yeah, it's like my grandmother still believes that two women can't live together. When I told you, I told him stunk. I actually remember what I said. <laughs> I was like, "I'll rather her than any of you fuckers here. You all work on my nerves." Mm. And then the other guy said, "He's like, now what did I do? What did I? Why you? What did I do? Why are you calling me out?" I was like, "If all of you, blah, blah, blah. and I was just like." Shalon, let's go. Shout out to Shalon. Let's go. Let's go start on our project. That's cool. Is Mama sitting on a blankie? I am. Gail actually yeah. said something really cool. <clears throat> to be fair, so say, society kind of teaches us to be pick me. Femininity is portrayed as bad. So, of course, young women want to distance themselves from it, unfortunately. Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of women go through a phase like when they're very young of like not self hatred, but Trying yeah, to you grow not up with a lot of like shame everybody else. And it's, I don't know if I want to talk, touch on this topic on your stream, but oh, if you grow up in a religious household, you oh, yeah. have a lot of shame. Yeah. Like you constantly being fed that don't act like a whore, don't do this or you're a whore, yeah. don't yeah. do that or you're a whore, 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 yeah. whore, 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 all the time. So that self hatred, it starts like at a very young age. Uh, yeah. So it's very easy to fall into the, the pick me route, right? But the difference is as an adult, when you become an adult, you should naturally want to learn to be a better person yes. and grow and that. So yes. I have very little patience with adult big means. Yes. If they're teens and they're kids. Yeah, then it's growing. like, you That's know, fine. I feel sorry for you. I just, yeah. the, the only, my only issue, woman, yeah. My, my, my one concern is that, like, I feel more pity for young pick me's because they're going to realize way too late about the kind of people that they are attracting into their circle. It's not good people that they're attracting. Mm. It's not. And I just, you know, I get very sad. Like, we, we most recently, I don't want to name any names, but we encountered a pick me on Twitter. And it was just horrible, man. She was being a total cunt. And I was like, I really do feel sorry for you. 
Mm -hmm. Like I do. But you Anyway. <clears throat> I, I do feel you on the religious that. the religious trauma as well. I, I yeah. do understand yeah, that. We shouldn't well. get into that too much because I will go off on that. Dude, I've gone off before on stream. Really? Multiple that's times. That's hardcore, but I don't want to offend anyone. I like I genuinely when it comes to religion, I don't like offending people because I'm all for if you are religious or spiritual, then That's perfectly fine. That. But you should yeah. also have the rights to speak of your religious experience. Mm. So. My only issue with religion are the assholes that are attached to it. And it's in every religion. There's always like it's very patriarchal, the um, yes. Abrahamic faiths, and with patriarchy, there comes comes problematic men, and problematic men ruin women and little girls. So, if you're a woman in an Abrahamic faith with like an extremist community, right, you you're gonna grow up really messed up. You you're almost definitely gonna be a pygmy first of all. Yeah. So, that's that's <clears> that. <throat> that. There's a lot of weird rules around what is ladylike. You have to grow up and realize none of it matters because uh, it's more about control and not about raising a good woman. Exactly. Yep, yep, yep. 100%. Kel knows what's up. Oh, yeah. For sure. So I want to touch on the topic of booby streamers that you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So... First of all, uh, no hates. We praise women that want to get their bag. Yeah, yeah. So I, well, I love boobies, first of all. I yes. Think they're amazing. Yes. So what I, so I F with women who are oh. 100%. Um, oh, shit, fuck. Two minutes to load shedding, bro. <gasps> okay, let me, okay, no, let's wrap it up, actually. Let's wrap it up. We, we, you know what? We can do a part two next month. What do you think? Yeah, but just quickly, just quickly, because people might get the wrong idea. Like, Go for I it, go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it. Go for it. Boobies, I have something against pick me's. Yes. who are on the fence about it like they're yes. kind of sneaky about it but then they talk down on other booby streamers and yes. Like, yes, 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 yes 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 so she's not so. against booby streamers she's no, against no, no. hypocrites yes there we go all right guys i love you so much we all love boobies mm -hmm. the world is a peaceful place when there are more boobies in it yes, all right i love you guys so much thank you so much for chilling with us today uh rishka let's quickly Fanach, find somebody to raid. Mm -hmm. Who are, yeah, who we, are we seeing minutes. over here? I see Henrico's live. I see. I'm just scrolling now. And I see... Oh, lordy. There's actually not that many people my side. Tater Beans is live. Yeah, sure. On the topic of boobies. Let's go yes. say hi to Tato. Let's go say hi to Tato's. <laughs> okay. Ah, browser, please. Copy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right why are you doing that thank you so much for having me i had a lot of fun i could talk for hours with you honestly thank you for having me i appreciate you coming on and, and speaking to us and all this good shit and i hope that you have an amazing evening because as soon as i stop streaming i'm also going to disconnect from the discord so thank you for joining me yeah um, I, I love you so much now. i love you so much love you too babe Mwah. all right bye guys have a good one i love you Mwah.